Hello, and welcome to A Brief Case of Luxury, a place to learn about mindful luxury consumption. As a business professor, I basically get paid to research and share what I've learned to help businesses make better decisions. Well, in today's video, I want to share with you some of what I have learned doing my favorite type of research, online shopping. And not just shopping for anything, but for Hermes, and not just any Hermes items, but their bags. I'll go over the bags I'm considering buying pre-loved from my two favorite sites, Fashion File and The Real Real, and we'll be looking at their pre-loved prices compared to the Hermes boutique prices, and who knows, maybe one of your dream bags is on this list. This is not sponsored, but I personally prefer Fashion File because one, I find their website a lot easier to navigate, Two, I don't pay taxes for the state I live, which I do have to for the real real. Three, they do have a luxury layaway payment option. And four, when they do have their site-wide seasonal coupon codes, Hermes bags are often included for Fashion File, but excluded from the real real. Now I know in my previous video about my Hermes bags, I said that I would only go the pre-love route from now on, with the exception of the Kelly 35, but really there are several other bags I would consider going the pre-love route, and I wanted to share with you the logic behind why pre-love might be a good alternative for some of us, and what other criteria I have in place for what makes a good pre-loved Hermes purchase. We all know how ridiculously difficult it is to get bags from the boutique or from the website for that matter. There are several challenges that stand in the way between you and the bag of your dreams. The two big things being, one, you may not be able to get the bag of your choice in terms of color, size, or heck, even type for crying out loud. I'm sorry, but the Birkin and the Kelly are not interchangeable bags. And you most definitely, 99% of the time, won't get it when you want it. Now two, the price of acquiring a bag from Hermes, especially one of their quota bags, is more than just the cost of the bag itself. You typically have to establish some sort of history with the brand, which means a shopping profile, which means additional purchases must be made and therefore additional money must be spent. Now, if you really are a fan of the rest of the Hermes products, then that's typically not an issue. But if you are only after certain bags, then going the boutique route really just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I can definitely see the appeal that under certain conditions, the pre-love route might actually be the way to go. Here are the criteria I have for when I'm shopping for Hermes bags pre-love. One, I want to know what the total boutique price is, tax inclusive, and see if I can beat that price on the pre-love market. I mentioned in that same previous video that I bought my Birkin 35 on Fashion File and saved myself almost $600 by not having to pay taxes because of the state I live, as well as getting it for way below retail price. So I definitely consider that a successful pre-loved purchase. But when it comes to Hermes bags, not everything is worth purchasing pre-loved, especially if you end up paying above retail price, which honestly is more often the case than not. And I know you can make the argument that even if you do pay a little over or even double the retail price, you wouldn't have to buy anything else or play the so-called Hermes game, but that to me just isn't logical. I do plan on making a video in the near future about the economics-driven philosophy for why I will never buy luxury items above retail price. But for now, let's just treat that as one of my two principles for purchasing Hermes Preloved. The second principle is that it has to be in excellent or new condition, unless it's a truly vintage piece. So there we have it. Those are my general Preloved Hermes shopping strategies. So let's go shopping. I'm not going to go over every single Hermes bag, but this is the list of bags on my personal list that I would consider, as well as some of the more popular bags at the moment, just for comparison's sake. But let's start with our non-quota bags first, and specifically, let's start with Hermes's wallet on chain category. So right off the bat, I can tell you from stalking these websites for months that you are not going to find any Kelly to go's or Constance to go wallets below retail price. You'll be lucky to find them at retail price for a piece that's not even in the best condition. So I'm already ruling those out. I personally would only consider the Kelly to go because just by personal taste, I'm not a big fan of the giant H buckle on any of the Constances. Now the Click 16 wallet is not as popular or as widely available pre-love compared to the Kelly or the Constance to go, but it is something I think looks super low key and casual. And when it does turn up, you can often find it at or below retail price. So that's something I'll be keeping my eye out for. For instance, look at this one on the real real right now. I think that's a pretty good price for the wallet. Now moving on to non-quota bags that I personally wouldn't consider pre-loved. The first one would be the Picatin. 
I'm personally looking for the Picotin 22, and honestly, ones that are available pre-lift often look pretty janky and still right at retail price. So unless it's the right color, the right hardware, this is something that I'll probably just wait for through the boutique. Even though I'm personally not on the market for the size 18, you do find a lot of those pre-loved, but again, never below retail for one that's in really good or excellent condition. The other non-quota bag would be the Her Bag. Now, the only Her Bag I'm currently on the market for is the coated canvas version with gold hardware. So unless that comes at pre-loved and under retail, again, that's something I'm just going to be patient for and wait if it ever happens. However, if you are personally on the market for the Her Bag, the pre-loved route isn't the worst. You can often find some right at retail price but not much under if you're looking for one in good condition or even better yet just try your luck at the Hermes website that's how I got mine I feel like her bags are the most common bags to be dropped on the website on a regular basis now the last non-quota bag would be the Evelyn I mentioned that I'm personally not on the market for any of the Evelyn bags so I don't typically pay too much attention to them but I do know you can find them pre-loved but again it's hard to find one in excellent condition below retail at best you can find one in really good condition right at or a little above retail. Now these next three bags are my serious non-quota bag contenders for the pre-love route. First is the Sac Rouli. This is one I would definitely get pre-loved. We're talking about excellent condition bags for anywhere between one to $2,000 below retail price. Take this gorgeous apricot one on Fashion File. It is such a cutie. And when Fashion File had their Black Friday sale, I did test to make sure the coupon codes did work. So be on the lookout for the next time they run a sale. The Real Real had some really good options for below retail price as well. So compared to its original seven and a half thousand dollar price point pre-tax, keep your eye out for the Ruli. Now the 2024 bag in the size 21 is another that I would consider buying pre-loved. Again, because you can get that for anywhere between one to $2,000 below retail. It's not a cheap bag from the boutique. It literally retails for about the same price as a mini Kelly at about eight and a half thousand dollars, but you can typically find them anywhere up to $2,000 under retail. Now the last in this category for me would be the bleed, either in the mini or the size 25 or 27, depending on the year of the bag. Now the minis are usually available right at around retail price, but going up to the size 25 or the 27, you can usually find them below retail price. Again, anywhere up to $2,000 off for an excellent condition bag. I find this larger size so much more functional just for that casual style of a bag. Okay, next up, let's talk about their quota bags. So I mentioned that I'm not a huge fan of the Constance only because of the giant H buckle. Now don't get me wrong, I love how it looks on other people, but just for my personal taste, it's a little much, plus I'd be worried about scratching the buckle. So I'm only going to focus on the various sizes of the Birkin and the Kelly. So again, right off the bat, let me tell you that the Mini Kelly and the Birkin 25 are off the list for pre-loved for me. I just cannot justify paying double or even triple the retail price for a Mini Kelly, and it blows my mind that there are people who actually justify it. I'd love to know the thought process behind it. It has to be coming from a purely emotional place because in no world could that make economic sense unless I'm just missing the big picture. So if you are on the market for a mini Kelly Birkin 25 or even the Kelly 25, you might be better off trying your luck at the boutique or in Paris because if you are able to find anything even remotely close to retail, it is not going to be in good condition. Now in terms of anything larger, that leaves the Birkin 30, 35 and up, as well as the Kelly 28, 32 and 35 now keep in mind that the larger the size, the more likely you will be able to find it for well under retail in very good or excellent condition. I would say for the Birkin 30, the Kelly 28, and the Kelly 32, you can usually find them right at retail between the pre-tax and the post-tax range. And the Birkin and Kelly 35s are definitely options you can find either right at the pre-tax mark or definitely under as well. So for me personally, I'll be paying attention to the Birkin 30s and the Kelly 28s. I find the Kelly 32 just a smidge too big for daily use and a little bit too small for work use. So just as a quick recap of the bags to pay attention to on the pre-love market, definitely be paying attention to the Sac Rouli, the 2424s, the Belides, and the Birkins and Kelly's sizes 28 and up. The others just aren't worth paying above retail, in my humble opinion. Let me know if you have found other bags that I've missed, or if you have purchased pre-love for above retail, I'd love to learn more as well in terms of why that was the best option for you and if you have any regrets paying above retail. I do plan on making a future video about 
about what my strategy is for shopping from other categories pre-loved because I do think there are some categories that are worth looking at pre-loved, but there's this balance, right, between building a good pre-spend at the boutique if you're really interested in getting a quota bag from the store versus simply just getting what you really want regardless of whether or not it counts towards your spend. So let me know if that's something you'd like to see. If you see anything on this list that you did end up purchasing, I'd love to know and celebrate alongside with you. Also, if you have any experience selling your pre-loved versus boutique bought items, that's just something I'd like to know more about. How well pre-loved bags sell again on the pre-loved market. I'm also going to be keeping my eye out on how the pre-loved market prices are going to fluctuate with the new Hermes price increases set to happen very soon. If you are like me and you are also on this journey to becoming a more mindful luxury consumer and you find this content helpful, please consider subscribing to this channel, tapping the notification bell so we don't have to go through this journey alone. See you next time.